Okay, so here, here we have uh, our hero character, Marcus Phoenix, um, with his Lancer. Uh, we wanted a very proud looking Marcus. We wanted that intelligent, badass look. I think we captured that in his eyes and, you know, how he, he looks smart and almost like a predator, uh, lion like. The term intelligent, badass was thrown around a lot, and um, I, I really think we captured it. Well, when we started with Marcus, we knew that. Um it's probably mentioned before, we wanted a really strong character. We, we wanted someone that almost looked like a bad guy. He was a he, you know, complete badass. You, you knew you didn't want to mess with him. It was a pretty daunting task because the project had already kind of started before we started concepting Marcus and we knew this character was going to identify the whole Gears project on down the line. He was kind of the first and most important uh, um, asset for the whole game. So I spent a lot, of almost a month, doing iterations and stuff on Marcus. Let's see, when I first started out, I kind of had a, I was into world, or Vietnam kind of history stuff at the time. So I was picturing contrasting a locust with more of a real world kind of Vietnam kind of guy. Because, you know, to me those guys were the roughest and toughest thing I knew at the point. So I was doing a lot of iterations based on kind of uh, Vietnam tech, you know lots of cloth and flappy bits and, and things like that that would look good in the engine. But it, it, it never really panned out, it didn't seem like we were pushing it enough, so I kind of started going towards a, I was trying to stay away from the typical Space Marine, but we had to try everything first before I kind of launched into that. We actually, uh, we decided for a bit to try something really out of control, uh, kind of a Shogun kind of overlapping armor kind of thing. So we did a lot of overlapping kind of shapes and armor and just trying to push the envelope a little bit and not have your typical, you know, what exactly you would expect for a space marine. Um, let's see, some of the details here. You can tell some of them are looking a little too stereotypical. And then I got into this kind of the SWAT, you know, the SWAT police kind of guys on a couple of them. You know, with the dark armor and the, you know, it looks like uh, bomb shield stuff. And then some of them I even got into Navy SEAL stuff. I, I think I was playing Rainbow Six at the time, actually. <laughs> but I uh, kind of Navy SEAL assault crew stuff. None of it was looking heavy enough or, or, you know, it just, it wasn't clicking for some reason. I hadn't found it. And this is probably, these iterations are probably three weeks into the design phase still and I haven't even nailed it. Then finally, I, I forget, I think I came up with this circular shape that's on his chest. And at the time, it really didn't have any function, but it kind of, it looks like a manhole cover. But it, it just looked really solid and, and sturdy. And you knew that the guy underneath it had to be really tough to be holding this thing up if, it, you know, if it's got something this big and solid on it. The rest of the armor just kind of built off this circular shape. I didn't really have a function for it at first. You know, we, we imagined maybe it would open up and have ammo clips or something in it. But eventually it just became, you know, the, the shape that identified the cog and everything else was built off of it. And I was really proud of the shoulder pad shape. Um, unfortunately it didn't pan out in game, it just didn't look right, so they kind of pulled back on that. I mean, I was doing helmet variations and things. Then this was the final, the final design. I must have worked on the face probably for a week by itself, doing iteration after iteration because getting that kind of grizzled, badass look was, was pretty difficult. Um, it was really interesting. This is one of the only designs while I've been at Epic that when I came to the end, absolutely everyone was on board for it. So it felt really good to finally, uh, finally get this thing done. And it, it really got people excited for the project because at this point, no one really knew what it would be like. So this is a paint over I did for, uh, uh, Kevin Lanning was working on the model and we were having a hard time kind of picturing what the final outcome would be. Um, so he fired me a, uh, an iteration of his high poly model and I did a paint over um, just kind of working out the graphics and you know kind of the insignias and stuff that he might use. Um, the, the level of dirt, you know, the color which is gray. Um, and then he, you know uh, figuring out his headgear, a bandana instead of a helmet, you know, so you could see his face uh, in game was pretty important. We just wanted to kind of see, you know, eventually what he would look like in game, and I think, I think he got pretty close to, you know, Kevin put his spin on it, which he, he does an incredible job, but it came pretty close to our, our vision, which it was very successful, I think. All right, so what you're seeing here is uh, on the left side, you're seeing the very rough, uh, it was kind of almost portion check of the mesh uh, for Marcus Phoenix. 
On the right is Jayhawk's uh, reference uh, that he painted over for me to change the proportions off the left model. Okay, so left side we're seeing Jayhawk's uh, concept from proportion changes. On the right side we're seeing the changes I did to match his concept. So as you see, he's slimmer now and uh, more human versus a uh, bulky game guy. This is continuing on the high poly mesh. Um, just basically just, just checking in all those details, working in all the details of the back since that's a, that's a huge area and aspect of them. So what you're seeing here is the final high poly of Marcus Phoenix. This is, has been ZBrushed, uh, imported back into 3D Studio Max and rendered out. This is then used for the, to create the normal map off the, for the low poly. Let's see, we wanted to get him kind of, kind of bulky, but not too bulky. So we, we added quite a, quite a few uh, amount of bolts. Um, bolts, kind of big pouches. Uh, we streamlined the shoulder pads quite a bit versus the original concept. Um, overall, his shoulder width and, and chest area still, still maintains a bulk as well as the arms. This is a close-up of Marcus Phoenix's head. This is version two. We, uh, we added quite a bit of hair to him, uh, the bandana. Beefed up his face quite a bit, as well as you know, giving him a little more worn, torn face. So what you're seeing here is a low poly. This is around 15,000 faces. This is built directly on top of the, the high poly mesh that you, you saw previously. Uh, close up of the face, around 5,000 faces. Uh, all the loops are tried to build in for, for deformation. This is a, um, a really early shot of Marcus. Um, this was how his head was um, envisioned in the first iteration um, and we had this in the game for a little while and uh, it just wasn't true to the concept and, and didn't look, didn't give off that intelligent badass look so we kind of changed that. But in defining the skin shaders and stuff for this model, um, we all our new toys kind of came online for the engine and we were able to use um, some subsurface and, and things like that to mimic, uh, it's actually a transmission, it's a light trick that kind of mimics subsurface scattering. Um, so we're able to apply that to this and kind of give that like uh, translucent skin feel to um, to the, you know, his face in areas like the cheeks and the forehead and the nose, stuff like that. Um, we did some surface bump testing for his scars and the wrinkles under his eyes and his lips and, and stuff like that. And it just turned out to be a little too much, so we kind of toned it back and uh, we re-envisioned the head more like the concept, and that's kind of the Marcus that's in game now. Uh, this was some, we were doing some testing for the uh, armor variant and the shaders. You know, what, what does his armor look like? Is it Kevlar? Is it metal? Is it, um, you know, lead or whatever it is, you know? Um, he's very heavy with his lead. Uh, <laughs> so what we came up with, we, we uh, a couple different sheens. We were mostly playing with specular and, and stuff like that. We kind of came up with, it's it's like a titanium alloy, something that they would have on the planet Sarah, and, and um, we just you know, played with the specular and, and things like that to make it look not crazy shiny. We didn't want this futuristic space marine, but used, war-torn, um, you know, that, that type of thing, real dull and heavy. We wanted these guys to look really heavy and meaty. Okay, what you're looking at here is, uh, this is kind of his texture layout uh, of the uniform of the body of Marcus. Um, to the extreme left is a normal map. This is created through a process where we model the high poly, uh, extremely high poly character, then we model a low poly character and, and uh, using Max's tools um, we process that and we come out with a normal map that kind of wraps the low poly and gives the illusion of a high poly character in, in the game. Um, in the center is his color map, and this is kind of the, the coloration. This is what gives the, the armor the color. Um, and so we had little bits of um, dark areas where there would be cloth or leather and stuff like that. Um, some dirt on the bottom of his boots. And you don't you really need to go crazy with it because you want the normal map to shine through the, the color. Um, so it, it takes on the lighting information and stuff. So you really bake minimal lighting into the texture and stuff like that. And you really just want flat colors. 
Um, and to the right is the specular map. Um, we played around with a bunch of different sheens and specular stuff, and, and um, this is what we came up with. There's some the whiter areas are, are more chromy looking aluminum metallic areas. The bluer areas are more dull metal with kind of a blue sheen to it. And of course, the, the dark areas are where like the leather or the burlap or whatever you know the jean cloth, whatever they they've got on. Uh, and this is just a look at the material editor. Um, Unreal, Unreal Ed has a really robust material editor and we're able to do some pretty fantastic things with it. Um, this is where we can call in those individual textures like the normal map and the color map and the specular map and, and plug them in and create a shader and then from that we can go and we can add transmission and play with the subsurface. Um, we can adjust the me metallic properties, we can play with specular power, um, give, use masks along with that. Um, to adjust the sheen of the specular on the skin versus the metal versus the little cracks in the metal and little worn edges and, and things like that. So this is where we put it all together and, and, and make the shader. Okay, this is Marcus uh, from Gears 1. This is kind of uh, his mean, I'm going to kick your ass look. Um, <laughs> I think this was done for uh, some publicity shot somewhere. I think I still think this is the early. Um, this is an early head on him, but I'm not sure. He's so kind of distorted in this image. This is Marcus in Gears 2. Um, the image on the left is kind of what we did was um, in Gears 1. Marcus was the way his UVs were laid out. It wasn't optimal. Um, you can see the, the image on the left is a little bit blurry and it's not as crisp as the one on the right. So one of the things we wanted to do for Gears 2 was kind of give Marcus an upgrade and um, crispen him up, make him look sharper and, and uh, nicer in the engine and in the game. Um, so the image on the right is the new Marcus that will, uh, as he appears in Gears 2, um, and he's, you can see the difference. Um, his armor is just a lot sharper, a lot clearer and crisper. Um, we've upgraded the poly count on him so that when you zoom in, you don't see any of the vert iterations on his shoulders or on um, his profile. And uh, his hair is nicer, the bandana is a little bit cooler, the way it sits on his head and the back and, and the tie and stuff like that. Real subtle, but uh, you'll, you'll notice the changes. Uh, here, here's his back version. In this version, the version, the guy on the right is the old Marcus, and the one on the left is the new. And you can kind of see what we did to the bandana, um, the shoulder pads, um, and the, the overall clarity of the armor is a lot crisper now. In this slide here, the character light. This is our new character lighting for uh, Gears 2, and what was added is um, kind of a, a bounce light you can see. So in Gears 1 what would happen is the light would be on the left and it would be behind the character and he would go extremely black and the emissive on the shoulder pad would go black and it would just be a, a black mess really. Um, so for Gears 2, um, Andrew, the, the programmers, um, created a system where we get some nice bounce light um, on the character and you can kind of see that on his right side. He's really only got one, there's only one light in the scene that's kind of over his right shoulder to the rear, um, left facing I guess. And uh, it's, normally it would just go black on his right side but now we've got some nice bounce light coming off that pillar and stuff and uh, it just makes the characters look more dimensional and they just don't go flat. This is Marcus in Gears 2. This is how he appears. Um, we've upgraded kind of the lighting on him, his armor. He's more crisp and clean. Um, the muzzle flashes play off him better. His lighting is better. Um, and this is how he'll appear in Gears 2.